Hi, this is Frankie with The Calling, and today we've got a great guest on with me. Um, he is a church planner, a pastor and of a great church starting there uh, in St. Petersburg, Florida, um, doing some great things. Uh, God is moving in some great ways. And on The Calling today, it's my pleasure to have Pastor Mike Conaway. Welcome to the show, Pastor Mike Conaway. Hey, hey. How you doing today? Hey, thanks, man. Thanks for having me on, man. I'm doing awesome. Awesome. God is a good God. I see you, I see you there with all your cowboy gear in the background. Must be a Dallas fan. Got a rocket, baby. Cowboys all the way. You know, got five. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you guys got five. When are you going to get the next one? You got any idea? Well, uh, I think it's going to be next year once we get this uh, secondary underway. All we need is uh, one or pieces. We're right there, ready to rock Awesome. Uh, so oh, I think win that uh, win that beautiful. I think uh, the new coach is going to do you guys a lot of good. How about what do you think? Well, you know, it's so important to have discipline, and, and that's one of the things I think we were lacking. With uh, I, I called Wade Phillips Peepaw because he just seemed like you know he was always just kind of just kind of come on over here, guys. You know, we'll get ice cream. And after the game, just didn't seem like he really put a lot of uh, discipline on the team. Where I feel like Jason Garrett is going to bring some serious discipline to the team, and you know, uh, and 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 with that discipline is going to come a winning attitude. You know, yeah. and and you know, be discipline. You know that. I know that. So yeah, well, it'll be uh, interesting to see what they end up could end up doing. I was kind of surprised they kept him. Uh, actually, but you know, he seems like he's got got his stuff together. He actually, you know, did some good for them at the end of the season. So we'll see. We know we'll keep uh, bugging you if they don't do anything. So <laughs> hey, whatever happens, baby, it's Cowboys for life. So that's how we roll for life. <laughs> for life, that's for sure. Well, let's get into uh, a few things about uh, City on the Hill Church. That's the church you planted. Um, I think it's ten months ago. Uh, you and your wife, Sorry, Lorena, okay. and a, a group of people there in St. Pete. Um, and mm-hmm. tell us about how you got where you're at right now, kind of like a little background of, of you, and and uh, tell us kind of like the insider story. Well, you know, uh, man, I tell you, it's been a, uh, it's been a real journey. Uh, about seven years ago, I really uh, felt the call of the Lord. I knew that he was going to bring me into a position as a uh, lead pastor. I didn't know when, didn't know when, didn't know how. And, um, you know, over the last few years, there have been different people who said, you know, you really you, you, you really have the makings of a church planter. And I, I always thought it was going to be something different. I always thought I would have a congregation. I didn't know that God was going to be calling my congregation out of nothing and, and creating a congregation for me. So um, in uh, October of 2008, God dropped the name of the church in my heart. He said, uh, "City on a Hill Church." I was packing some um, some uh, some supplies up for uh, for an outreach we were doing to an apartment community, and um, and that name dropped in my heart. Now that name had to set for 16 months. I didn't know what God's intention was. I knew He gave me that name. I just didn't know when. You know, it's important to not get ahead of God. And so, you know, I diligently and faithfully continued to serve. serve church I was, I was uh, in a, in a great position. Um, had the opportunity to be the teaching pastor there, so a lot of fun, a lot of great memories, a lot of great friends there. And uh, and then in uh, March of this time last year, actually January of this time last year, God really spoke to my heart in a really powerful way. And really, He asked me, uh, "Can I have it all?" You know, um, uh, Lorena and I, my wife, is such a, a precious part of my life, and um, we knew that it was going to cost us everything. Uh, in order to plant this church. And uh, Jesus came. When Jesus found me, man, I had nothing. You know, I was a broken kid. I was a drug addict, an alcoholic. Um, I had so many things going against me. And when Jesus found me, I didn't have anything. And in the last 20 years, man, he's brought me into this position of, of who I am in him, by his grace, obviously. And so here it is, January of 2010, and God calls me and says, um, I want it all, Mike. Um, uh, do you trust me with your life, with your home, with your cars, with your family, with your relationships? I'm calling you to plant a church, and I'm giving you a dream. And so 
my wife and I began a season of prayer together, and I began to pray and fast, and I went down to Fort DeSoto Park. While I was down at Fort DeSoto, you know, there's no mountains in Florida, so you've got to make your own mountain. One and, of the hills, yeah. <laughs> you ain't kidding. So I went, up to, uh, I went up and climbed Fort DeSoto, and I would pray there in the mornings, fasting and praying. And in that time, God began to shape the vision for City on a Hill Church. He said, you're going to be Luke 15. You're going to be reaching out to the lost. Because that's one of the most important things. Anybody who knows me knows I firmly believe we'll never lock eyes with someone that doesn't matter to God. And so uh, the lost. And then the second group of people, God gave me Ezekiel chapter 34. And he said, you're going to bring wanderers home. Um, there are so many people in this city um, who had no place to worship, no place to call home. And, uh, and, and, and so God said, you're going to bring these wanderers home. And so Ezekiel 34, you know, people who disgruntled by the church, hurt by church leadership, you know, people who have been discounted and discouraged and, and, and dis, dis, uh, discarded. And so um, I began that process. And then, of course, God also said, you're going to send out every person. You've heard everybody say every member is a, every member is a, a said, if minister. I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto, unto me. And that's, that's really it. Frankie, I will tell you this. The thing that I have found practically above everything else is a vision. If you communicate your vision and your passion and your heart to people, if they identify with it, then they're supposed to be a part of your ministry. If they don't, we don't need to beg. Because I'm telling you right now, brother, my vision, it ain't for sale, rent, lease, or loan. And if you come on board and you think you can leverage ministry, none of that matters. I had Jesus in a dream when I started, and I still have Jesus in a dream. And so it's really communicating vision. That's really the key, vision. That's awesome. And we're going to take a, a short break for our sponsors. When we come back, I want you to tell us why St. Petersburg and, and what the process was of determining, you know, uh, you know, what God said to you and when he said it to you, say, you know, and let us know, you know, why St. Petersburg. But when we come back, we're going to talk about that um, on the calling. Uh, you guys... Um, if you have any feedback, uh, I'm sure Pastor Mike would love uh, uh, your emails or questions. Um, if he has time, he's got a, he's got a busy schedule. But uh, what's your what's your email address, Pastor Mike, over there at, at City on Hill? My email. I'm going to go ahead and give him my personal email. It's mj underscore conaway at yahoo.com. That's mj underscore conaway at yahoo.com. 